happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Martin Luther King was, for many of the most important years of his life, an Alabamian. We almost forget and need to remind ourselves how much this is about us. I just think that he's an individual who used the gifts that God had given him, and he answered the call. He was able to combine through his words, action, and I'm going to say the art of the sermon, a vision for us. It reminds us of what our power and responsibilities are. He has made a world of difference to this state and to the rest of the nation, and I think to the world. As a community to really realize Dr. King's dream, we have got to have some hard conversations. What do we believe in? What do we stand for? The dream was to bring people together. You can't dream forever. You have to take the dream into a reality. This nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created each other. It was on Martin Luther King Day and it was about 35 years ago and I was driving through Tuscaloosa. I had looked around and there seemed to be absolutely nothing happening. So I had some ideas and I went to see uh, Dr. Knopke, who was then special assistant to the uh, president. Uh, certainly they wanted to, to honor uh, Martin Luther King and uh, I was certainly supportive of that because I wanted uh, it to be known that the university shared uh, those principles. We went over to see Charles Steele, who was at that point uh, our representative, former city councilman, and we told him about this idea. This would enhance not only Tuscaloosa, Alabama, but the state of Alabama and the southeastern region of the United States of America and ultimately the country and the world. As we think about this uh, holiday, it is a reflection upon the fulfillment of values, the realization of values, uh, taking up the challenge uh, to become uh, all that we are and all that we could be. I think we should invite someone who represents uh, the arts community and can do something for us that would be special. So when we invited James Earl Jones, here to read the stirring words of Abraham Lincoln with the University Symphony is Mr. James Earl Jones. To have uh, James Earl Jones with a full symphony reading Carl Sandburg's litany of the Lincoln portrait. The darkness of the quiet past are inadequate to the stormy present. The occasion is piled high with difficulty, and we must rise with the occasion. As our case is new, so we must think anew and act anew. We must disenthrall ourselves, and then we shall save our country. James Earl Jones, to come to uh, our city was something that we could be proud of. Not only be proud of, it was a teachable moment. It was uniformly heralded by all those who attended as one of the most significant, uplifting, gratifying, civic, religious, or cultural events. Second year looked like we weren't going to do the program. They said it was too expensive. Charles Steele called me and said, what's happening, Scott? I said, I don't think they want to do it again, Charles. And the uh, football team that year was invited to the Sunkist sponsored football bowl in Tempe, Arizona. The state of Arizona had rescinded the uh, recognition and uh, the celebration of Dr. King's birthday. If the university chooses to send the football team to Arizona, they will have a problem with their appropriations from the state. 
there was great pushback about whether Alabama should go to a game and participate in a game in a place where that was the prevailing civic sentiment. Dr. Roger Sayers, president of the University of Alabama, met with me along with Reverend John Nettleson. Reverend John Nettleson said, you and Charles worked something out. About 10 minutes after that, it seemed, I got a phone call. Uh, they, they had agreed to contribute to, to make a foundation that would support the concert and uh, and away we went. So this is happening on Martin Luther King's birthday weekend. Kurt Franklin came and did a concert as a part of the Realizing the Dream event series. And I can tell you, it was outstanding. John Legend coming and giving a speech and uh, what amounted to a concert. The whole entire room was singing. He really didn't even need backup singers. I mean, we were the backup singers. Ossie Davis you know, coming and giving a lecture. This is the, the time everybody would want an artist of that quality or a civic leader of that quality. And we, time and time and time again, have them. It's just simply spectacular. And, and it is worthy, it is as great as anything we do at the University of Alabama. This type of magnitude of personality over James Earl Jones or Cicely Tyson to come to uh, our city was something that we could be proud of. Not only be proud of, it was a teachable moment. The immense talent uh, that, that's willing to come to Tuscaloosa and be a part of, of this kind of event, those are big moments. But for me, uh, the legacy banquets where uh, we have a keynote speaker who's someone that has had a significant role uh, in the history of civil rights uh, in Alabama or, or in, the, in the nation and to uh, engage in uh, a, a presentation but then also a conversation with the community about the legacy of Dr. King, uh, where we are as a, as a nation and a society and what things we can be doing uh, to carry that forward. This event is really unique because it brings in Stillman College, Shelton State and the University of Alabama. So it is a unifying event programming has been provided us uh, with insights into uh, the struggles that many have endured uh, throughout the years. Uh, and I think the awareness of that um, and the education that is provided through the programming uh, really uh, allows people to, to grow and expand their, their thoughts uh, on these uh, topics that uh, are very important for everyone. It is wonderful to have representatives from those three campuses present. And so for the city, I think it's a great cornerstone event for the community. We can bring people together, get them involved in something bigger than themselves. It provides a bridge for the university to the community. So that participation and collaboration, I think is very good for the university as a whole. There are three awards in the Realizing the Dream event, the Call to Conscience, the Horizon, and the Mountaintop Award. The Horizon Award was established in 2009, as were the other two awards, to acknowledge an individual who shows hopefulness and has you know, had an impact in the community. The highlights for me of receiving this honor have really been getting to know other award recipients, just getting to learn from each other, and be in company with one another. We have so many similarities, but so many differences. And I think that's what the Realizing the Dream Award, and especially the Horizon Award, brings together these different young voices who are passionate about changing our community. And so my, the highlight for me has been 
getting to know those people who have won this award before me and looking forward to the ability to hopefully meet the person who's awarded next year. So many different people have been recognized and indeed so many people, so many more people should be recognized. The events are important because they encourage reflection and they're a necessary component of the healing and conversations that need to happen across the country. We need to understand that we cannot afford to have the amnesia of forgetting from which we have come. When I see things now, uh, people going forward, but I, I want to know how did you get where you, where you are. The Moody Building is sitting right where my grandmama's house was. And for me to be on the Moody Building agenda to bring greetings for something of this magnitude that will bring itself and exemplify the unity that my grandmama who used to be a domestic worker at the university. It was a spiritual high. The Realizing the Dream events are not gonna solve all of the deep and systemic issues, but they are gonna raise awareness. They are gonna encourage people to think and consider why are we even having a Dr. King celebration? What was the dream? What progress have we made? That's the part about sitting down being close enough to each other to really talk and listen. The ability for us to work together, to come together for one cause, has really been something that I think has been beneficial for this community. We really can, as human beings, grant that kind of humanity to one another and follow our better angels toward a more equitable and just society that does not continue to divide and to separate us uh, based upon uh, superficial differences. Well, my hopes is that we will continue, that we will continue to educate and we will continue to learn. That we must go from here. You can't just stay here. We're realizing the dream. It must turn into a vision. And I, I think the most important thing is for us to have hope that we can make a change and to chip away at the racial injustices, the uh, social economic injustices that exist. What I hope to see for it is for it to remain a value, re remain something, a cherished, a, a seasonal event. I hope to see more engagement with the Realizing Their Dream events in the future. I hope that students will uh, put it on their radar to come every year. I'd like to see speakers just excited and chomping at the bit to come and present at the dinner. My hope is that we not only continue, but that we, we broaden our, our reach in terms of the, uh, the work that we're doing. I would like to see more than just a program for a weekend. I would like to see the inclusiveness of what we have accomplished to be exemplified all over the world. What I look for you know, in this particular event is inspiration for me to do what Dr. King did, to answer the call to where I see things are not right, to be able to speak up and to be present and to make a difference. all of those important foot soldiers who made the movement have been huge inspirations for my life and continue to be. I think that Martin Luther King um, um, laid the print out there um, for all of us to follow. He stood for liberty. He stood for justice. And so what I'm doing is just a part of that. I'm only continuing on what he started. Dr. King said he had a dream he wished one day his four children can live in a nation where their values are judged not by their skin color, but only by the content of their character. I guess I just realized more now, and I would fight a lot more for minorities in general, um, just because you're not directly involved in it. 
doesn't mean if you think it's wrong, you can't say something. You know? Think peace. Think peace. You know? Start, what can we do to promote the positive things?